And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Eo Tyrannus, a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a Tyrannosauroid theropod, maybe you guessed that with the Tyrannus part of the name, that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now the Isle of Wight, United Kingdom, it was found in the Wessex Formation, it is estimated to be up to 15 feet or four and a half meters long, which is large for an early Tyrannosaur. I'm familiar with this one. I'm not always familiar with the dinosaurs of the day now that we're 490 in, <laughs> but Eotyrannus does come up fairly often. Yeah, it does. And Eotyrannus was gracile. It had a long tail. It walked on two legs. It had long arms with three long fingers and claws on them. And it had slender hands. Early reconstructions interpreted Eotyrannus as having much longer arms, but that turns out not to be the case. It had a vaguely rectangular snout, as Darren Nash put it. <laughs> I think that's a good way to describe Tyrannosaurus in general. A little bit boxier of <laughs> a front of a mouth than some of the others. It also had serrated teeth and thick fused nasals. And the nasal had a lot of pneumatization, a lot of air-filled cavities. It also had long shin bones and foot bones. But a lot of the skeletons still we don't know. The fossils were first found in 1995 by Gavin Lung. And it's one of the first early known tyrannosaurs. It helps show that Early tyrannosauroids were gracile, with the long arms and three fingers on each hand. The fossils were found at a cliffside exposure, which is a pretty fun way to find a fossil. Yeah, it can be great, because sometimes it's just a little bit of the animal poking out, and if that's the case and the rest of it's back in the cliff, it's nice and protected from above in a lot of cases, but depending on how much of it is eroded out of the cliff, it's not always as impressive. I was thinking of, you know, you're hiking a log and then you see a piece of, I don't know, a hand bone or something. Oh, like eye level? <laughs> yeah. Rather than just on the ground? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so Lung found a hand claw. Oh, that's probably why I used that as the example. Anyway, he took it to Hutt, who was then the curator at the Museum of the Isle of Wight, who went to the site and excavated the rest of the bones. The type species is Eotyrannus lungi, so named after the person who found him, who found the dinosaur. And the genus name Eotyrannus refers to the dinosaur being classified as an early tyrannosaur. It was described in 2001 by Stephen Hutt and others, including Darren Nash, who in 2022, along with Andrea Cow, published a monograph of Eotyrannus. The monograph is based on Nash's PhD thesis. And then the species name, of course, is named in honor of Lung. There are some synonyms of Eotyrannus. They're now nomomnudum. They include Gavinosaurus and Lungosaurus. Fossils of the dinosaur found include parts of the skull, vertebrae, parts of the ribs, arms, legs, and pelvis from a subadult. There's a lack of fusion, so that means it's probably a subadult. Although even though it's a subadult, it's not thought to grow much bigger than its estimated four and a half meter long body. Nation Cow found that the skull does not show longer rostrum proportions, unlike Megaraptor, so it does not have a long jaw. The not long snout shows that Tyrannosauroids, quote, were not consistently and perpetually specialized for robust snouts optimized for powerful biting across their history, end quote. Eotyrannus is the second most complete theropod from the Wessex Formation, after Neovenator, or Neovenator, depending how you want to say that. <laughs> well, it's the Wessex Formation, so they would probably say Neovenator. Mm, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Theropods have been found in that area since the 1860s, and many of them are named from fragments. So many of the Eotyrannus bones are broken or fragmentary, and the bones are embedded in hard mudstone. Nash said that Eotyrannus was not a pretty fossil and was difficult to prepare and that there's still more work to do even in preparing it. Hmm. The holotype was disarticulated before fossilizing, so most of the skeleton was scattered, and that makes it hard to identify a lot of the fossil material. The fossils were found in a plant debris bed with two other skeletons with it. It's possible that an animal drowned and then Eotyrannus was attracted to the carcass, which might have been a battleground between a few theropods and then resulted in some deaths, or Eotyrannus may have been partially scavenged before it was buried, or the specimen may have been deposited in the plant debris bed 
by a flood. It's hard to know exactly what happened there. But we do know that Eotyrannus lived in a warm environment that had wet and dry seasons, and other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include sauropods, ornithopods, such as Iguanodon and Mentelosaurus, the Carcharodontosaurian Neovenator, the Spinosaurus Reparovenator and Ceratosucops, the Dromaeosaur Ornithodesmus, the Compsognathid Aristosuchus and Calamosaurus, as well as other theropods. And other animals that lived around the same time and place include spiders, wasps, fish, amphibians, lizards, turtles, crocodiliforms, plesiosaurs, mammals, and pterosaurs. That's a lot of animals to be found in one area. But the Wessex Formation is a very well-documented one. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it was fairly pleasant to live in, too. Except for all the huge theropods. Well, <laughs> if you were a huge theropod, it would be pleasant. It's interesting to hear that Eotyrannus isn't that well-known of a fossil. It goes to show that sometimes really important fossils aren't the prettiest and aren't the most complete animals because just the fact that we know that it had three fingers, long-ish arms, and the shape of its head was different than modern tyrannosaurs gave us so much more information about those early tyrannosaurs just from those key spots in the body, even if they're not the most beautiful bones that you've ever seen. Yeah, it's nice that somebody worked on them to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And didn't just see them and think like, eh, those, those aren't so pretty. We don't need to prepare those. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 